Hi everyone, I'm Max Marganaut, and I'm here to talk about pre-processing your data for model input. Oftentimes, whenever you're building a model, you're going to be using some sort of real-world data. And real-world data comes with a whole slew of problems. You're usually going to be running into at least one issue. First and foremost, whenever you actually get your data into Python or whatever other tool you're using, it might just not read correctly. Sometimes your numerical values might be parsed as strings. And this is often something that you can change based on the settings in the parser. And it's something to check for before you actually try passing it into a model. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of angry errors. When you actually have your data in a state where you could feed it into a model, the next thing to look out for is NANs or missing values. And this is just either missing data or data that doesn't exist. It's something that you're going to run into wherever you look. And there are two main ways that we go about handling this. The first is by dropping it. Uh, so if you have any observation with some number of features, if there are any features that are NAN, you drop that observation. Now, this is fine. It's kind of like a, an off-the-cuff sort of reaction to it. Because oftentimes, you're going to have lots of individual NANs and many different observations. And you may just end up with no observations or not enough observations to get a good model out of it at the end. So something that we often do instead is to fill NAN values. And we often do this with cross-sectional data by filling with either the mean or the median or some other reasonable value given your understanding of the data. If you're working with time series data, filling with the mean or the median is less reasonable just because there's this additional structure in time. And filling with the mean or the median can incorporate some look-ahead bias. So often what we do instead is we will forward fill data or just stick to filling with a reasonable value. For example, if we're looking at a time series of risk exposures, a reasonable fill value would be a risk exposure of 1.0. This is a nice conservative estimate, and it includes enough information that you could actually make a reasonable uh, sort of deduction about that security when you actually feed it into your model. The next problem that you're likely to run into whenever you're handling data is outliers. And again, there are a few different ways that we can go about handling them. The first and most draconian way to handle outliers is to just drop them. But this loses information, right? We have these extreme values, and these are events that actually did occur. So we want to keep that information, but we don't want that information to skew our model towards it. So one thing that we can do instead of dropping outliers is to Windsorize them. Windsorization is when we set some percentile level, usually around 2.5% or 5%. And we take the top 5% and the bottom 5% of our data, and we just truncate it to the borders of those percentiles. So basically, if we have anything that is particularly high, we're going to lower it to the point where it's just at the threshold there. And likewise, if there's anything that's particularly low, we're going to raise it until it's just at the threshold. This way, we're keeping the observations that have extreme values. We're just not letting the values become so extreme that they skew our model. Another thing that you can consider doing with any individual feature in your data set is to normalize it. Basically, you center it around 0, and you divide by the standard deviation. This makes sense with some data sets, makes less sense with others, and it also depends on what sort of model that you're actually working with. Sometimes, different machine learning models can take a performance hit if your data isn't all on the same scale. So normalization is an advantage in this case. This can often be the case when dealing with a lot of support vector methods. In other times, you may want to just have that absolute distance between uh, the values within a given feature, and that's just fine. Sometimes you may need to face the fact that you just need to start over. Either you recollect the data or you get a similar data set from a different source. Sometimes data just isn't worth spending your time on to clean and process and get it through a model. 